Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Monday, August 19th, regular city council meeting. Clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Santi. Here. Alderman Glad. Here. Alderman Schaefer. Here. Alderwoman Bainey. Here. Alderman Hevick. Here. Alderman Devine. Here. Alderwoman Miller. Here. Mayor Jett. Here. Please stand for the pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, I'd like to ask any members of the public uh, that is wishing to address the city council at this time. Uh, there is a few that signed in. Uh, Ryan Dresky? Is that a Ryan? Paul Dresky. Paul Dresky. He's gonna wait. Oh, you're going to wait. You're going to wait. Yeah. Okay. Mark Justin. Thank you, Mayor and Council, for letting me have the opportunity to speak. My opportunity is a compliment. It's a compliment to the Public Works Department. Because I don't think everybody really pats these people on the back or the Park and Rec Department. The great job they do. I was they put in. I know it's a career path for a lot of them. But again, they're there day in, day out, sometimes seven days a week. Make our festivities, but make our streets safe, such as the uh, blacktop team out there, blacktop team, small blacktop uh, items. It doesn't fall in the big conglomerates. They get in there and do a, do a good job. Tree trimming, because our trees are hanging over our trees, our streets, and again, 
They freeze, they thaw, they freeze. And these people are out there day in, day out, doing a great job. My second item is just for you guys and ladies to have a more lively discussion about the intergovernment agreement with the high school. I personally feel as a taxpayer, I'm subsidizing the schools, even though they're paying for it. The fire, the policemen having the traffic. I think it's time for us to look not at studies that there's so much traffic, but traffic on Chris Lake Road. That stoplight could be green all the time until a set time between two and four. My police officer is my tax dollars. My high school is my tax dollars. So it's a lose-lose for me because I'm paying taxes. I'd rather have the high school pay for a stoplight with my tax dollars than have my officer sit there for two, three hours. He didn't come in just for three hours to go home. I know the chief of police and the deputies have another alternative to put him on the road for another eight hours or four hours. So I really think you need to have a more lively discussion and forget about your studies because your studies will tell me. And if it's umpteen thousand dollars a year times five times seven and pay for the street light. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Juicy. Anyone from the public like to make a public comment at this time? See none. Moving on to the consent agenda. Um, is there any Is there any members of the council wanting to remove any consent agenda items for separate consideration? See none. I'm looking for a motion to approve uh, consent agenda items 5A through 5F. Alderman Santi. I'll make the motion to approve, <coughs> to approve consent agenda items 5A through through 5F as presented. Thank you. Second. Alderman Miller. I'll second that motion. Thank you. Discussion on these items? Clerk, please call the roll. Um, Alderman Santi. Yes. Alderman Miller. Yes. Alderman Glad. Yes. Alderman Schaefer. Yes. Alderman Bainey. Yes. Alderman Mehevet. Yes. Alderman Javon. Yes. Thank you, Council. Uh, individual action items 6A uh, is discussion to approve an intergovernmental <coughs> agreement between the City of McHenry and McHenry High School District 156 regarding ingress, egress, and traffic signalization for McHenry West Campus. Derek, you want to go ahead and present yeah, this? Yes, thanks, Mayor. Uh, this single supplement actually covers the next two agenda items 6A and 6B, um, just to provide some information. The purpose of the Agenda items is for council to consider the approval and execution of two intergovernmental agreements. Uh, the first, uh, item 6A, re, uh, related to traffic uh, in, uh, in egress of the West Campus uh, property. And then the second one, item 6B, related to drainage as part of the expansion of the District 156 West Campus, uh, yeah, School District 156 West Campus project. And just so council is aware, um, most of the directors were involved in these discussions, including uh, Attorney McCardle, uh, Chief Burke, and uh, Director Strange, and uh, Director Paolo Recchi, and also uh, Martin, as well as myself, and uh, Attorney McCardle were part of the discussions or development of the IGAs along with uh, 156 administration, so we can uh, attempt to answer any questions that you might have about them. Thank you. Thank you, Derek. Open up for discussion by council. <coughs> Alderman Santi. Um, if, according to the way this document reads, if there's an analysis that needs to be done, is that our call and we decide who and when that would be taken care of in regards to that traffic analysis? Yes, I think that's, yes, that's the way it's phrased so that we can request it. And that, the, the cost of that would be, we, would be on District 156, is that correct? Yes, yep. Okay, and then uh, a quick question on the drainage. Uh, it's gonna be made, you know, as I read this, it's gonna be maintained and, and cleaned out uh, by the 156 staff. Uh, how often should that be done, and are we gonna then police that, or are we gonna check on that on a, day, on a once a year, or how, many, how often? We can follow up with it a few times a year. Okay. Make sure it's being it's being knocked down. And, and I'm assuming anyone 
that who's in that area notices anything, they would just make a call to our to, the, to our department. Right? Correct. Okay. Uh, that's all I have. Thank you. Um, and Schaefer. Um, the only question I had: Can uh, we get an update on the uh, with the drainage stuff? What was found during what's been out there? Because I heard there was some water issues. Um, they did find a some a natural spring area under the proposed tennis courts, so they went back to the drawing board, and it, that's why you don't see the <coughs> tennis courts completed yet. But they we did some engineering to alleviate that issue. Is that part? Because um, this kind of just addresses that drainage ditch. So, is there anything that needs to address that? those natural springs in here? Well, they will drain into that drainage ditch, okay. so as they always have. Um, so it's, it, no, I, I don't feel that there's a need to address. That specifically? Yeah. That's all I have, thank you. Anyone else on the right? Yeah, I guess the question would probably be referred to Attorney McCardle more than anything else. <coughs> is on the, uh, the drainage maintenance and all that, what about when it goes on the private property? And then, you know, we kind of brought that up in the past as far as, unfortunately, they're not all on that last uh, five feet of the property. And I don't see an issue right now, but not everybody that lives there, uh, will they be there forever? And, you know, you could wind up with somebody uh, that could be a stickler or something. I think the direction we're going is, is the right direction. I think it will look great compared to what it's been. Uh, I think it's a benefit to everybody that backs up to that drainage ditch, uh, including myself. But then again, uh, uh, like let's say my area. My area is my responsibility. Uh, according to this uh, agreement, it would be everything that uh, basically is up against the, the school property, along the school property. We have the triangle over there of the city's property that, is that included? Probably not. And then of course there's there's property that I have over there also on that drainage ditch that uh, would be in question as far as whether it's, again, I wouldn't have a problem doing, having them do it, but then I do it all the time anyway and I, I don't really have a problem if nobody else does it, but what about that city section there around that triangle? I don't, know, I don't know what the city section is, but the lots are one through 139. Well, 139. this was the, that was the old agreement. No, I'm, I'm talking about this one. Oh, okay. It, we have a new drawing that was done by our, our surveyor, and it shows the lots that are being um, maintained by the, by the uh, school district, and they're still identified as lots one through 39. Yes. 39. And um, with regard to the question of private property, I we did the research before we went and did this work to do the IGA, and the Plan Act, I don't want to say it's clear, but the law is clear that if there's drainage on private property, the uh, everybody has the right to go on that area and clean it out to keep it free flowing. Okay. Everyone along the path, including the school, school is agreeing with us that they're going to take the burden to actually affirmatively go out and maintain it which is a good thing now how does that how does that uh the homeowners uh do they hold any liability if somebody comes in to work on those on that property uh, i don't know we'll figure that out when that happens that's something well, that well, when, law. When i can't predict that happens, right or? they'll go to court they'll say everybody will sue everybody depending on how serious it is mm -hmm. and they'll have to apportion that liability for whatever you know, happened at that, at that time. What I'm saying is that if a homeowner doesn't have the right to block it, then they have the obligation to allow others onto it to clean it. That's it. That's all the that's all the the prescriptive rights talk about. As far as liability, that's all got to be worked out through common law negligence. Who is the active participant in it? You know, if the school's out there and they they cut off somebody's leg, that's going to be their issue. It's not going to be the homeowners. But somebody might blame the homeowner because of the condition of the lot that caused the device to do whatever it did. So it depends on the facts. And, and we can't predict where that's going to go. 
we can somewhat predict the cleaning the rights and obligations with regard to keeping it free flowing. Would we be more justified to bring in the fact that uh, the school would identify the property owners on that agreement? Um, I mean, we don't want to put any but any of these property owners. I know, but as well the, as myself, the school I'd be, I'd has be the right, right open, you know. Right, but without the agreement, the school has the right to go in there and keep it <coughs> free flowing today without an indemnification. We're just reaching an agreement that goes one step beyond and says, school, we're, we want you to do it. We don't want to rely, want to rely on individual homeowners because every homeowner is different. We want it consistently taken care of, and they agreed to do it. I don't know whether, I guess if they wanted to agree to an indemnification, they could do that. I think it's a big, it's a big request. But the problem winds up is, is uh, they have insurance, by the way. I mean, no, no, no. I, so I the understand. The is just belts and suspenders. But we're looking at um, where. I mean, it doesn't say in this agreement lots one through thirty nine no, or whatever. Yeah, there's an, there's two exhibits there, and I don't. They're not yeah. attached. They were really nice exhibits. Not in our park. I don't know what happened. We spent a lot of time on those. I'm sorry. The thing is, is is this the same exhibits as what we had with the original? It's the same that we lots. Had with them? It's the, the same, same lot lots. numbers. One, you know how it stretched along the curve there. It was okay. one through thirty-nine. I don't know where the triangle comes in, but it's all those lots. Okay. So that means nothing more. My lot is not included in yeah, that. I think you're probably uh, north of the thirty-nine. And he's and no, no, no. no. The, the problem winds up is, is you have one through 39. One through 39 goes all the way to the Kensington extension. Correct. Okay. However, um, there is probably 30 some feet of that drainage ditch that runs through my property. Off, and, off only, off and only about 10, 10 feet of it is in the, the easement. Mm -hmm. And I have no problem. I mean, if the if the school wanted to come in and because they didn't like the way I was maintaining it or whatever, I have no problem there. The question would be the liability for one and the legality of it, and, and that's that's my concern. Plus the fact that it doesn't address my property or well, it does address the school property, but that lots one through thirty nine. Uh, let's see, I think it's lot thirty five that doesn't even back up this drainage ditch. Because it goes south? It goes, yeah, yeah. Uh, right, well, I, I, the, the drainage ditch doesn't wrap around there. Is, is it, if, look, if there's no drainage ditch, they don't have the right to do it. They may have the obligation, but they don't have the right to walk on the guy's property. So if there's no drainage ditch, it's not. Correct, I'm, and I'm not talking about that. What I'm talking about, it doesn't address my life at all in that agreement. Right, you weren't one through 39, you were off to the north. I'm in right in the middle of one through 39. They, did, they, they address all the lots along Kensington and actually uh, some of those lots are uh, actually on Silvery. You know what, why don't we uh, put this at the end of the call here and we'll try and find the exhibits because we really need to find those. Okay. Uh, or at least the one, yeah. the draw. All I'm saying is, is that if we're going to have the agreement in place, I just want to make sure that we have them. I, 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 okay. you know, I'd rather make sure that we do pass it. I, mean, I think it should be. You know, I think we need okay. to move forward with it. Well, let me see if we can search for that. And, we'll and, and can we do it? Maybe in just uh, an approval with uh, the attorneys. Well, however you want to word it, but well, looking into the to the action so that. That everything from uh, the beginning of the drainage ditch on the east end all the way to Kensington Drive is addressed. Would that make sense? Only if I can see the. I need to see the lots. I don't want to. Can you just? Can you just oh, does Andy has it up here on? Uh, no, that's not it. That's not the. That's 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 yeah, just pass this one just for a few minutes if you want. David, yeah. <coughs> yeah. doesn't the standard? Because there's a drainage easement on Alderman Glad's lot. There is an easement back there. No, there isn't. There is. A, well, you know what? You, I guess you could have applied for an implied easement because that drainage ditch has run across all those years. 
The problem wound up is, is when they did Whispering Oaks, and I'm the, the furthest south lot of Whispering Oaks, all the lots were given a drainage easement on the back end of the lot. The problem winds up is, is my lot goes all the way across the drainage ditch all the way to that chain link fence, and the drainage ditch runs the opposite way. So therefore, yeah, uh, 10 feet of the drainage ditch is in an easement. The rest of Correct. it is outside the easement because <laughs> of the way it runs. And so that... So the standard language allowing anybody to go into that easement to maintain it. Well, well would all I'm cover, saying is, would is that the cover agreement. anybody, David, that would... Yeah, and I, <coughs> if I I'm going right, to pull it up. <coughs> our, our research didn't require there to be an easement. It was going under common, or the statutory law and common law of drainage, period. So it was like Alderman Glad was saying, where there's drainage common to your neighbors, drainage law will kick in with or without an express easement. And in the law is what I provided to you last time that says the neighbors have a right to go on there and keep it free flowing for the, the benefit of everyone. So why don't we just uh, take a minute and Derek's finding be drawn. Do you, uh, other, the other thing uh, besides the drainage, we're talking about the bus lane that they're turn, talking into making it a bus and car lane with the right out. Um, years back when they did the last referendum for the <coughs> expansion uh, is when they put this bus lane in and there was a lot of resistance, a lot of discussion and the school had said at that time that if we were putting in this lane it would always be just the bus lane. Unfortunately, times change, people change as far as the positions, so those promises are, are well forgotten. Um, you know, the people that own the, the two units on the east end of that quad that uh, is the last one next to Alder Terrace uh, winds up with a lot of buses that travel through there. Now we could be talking hundreds of cars going through there. Uh, it's quite a few cars, you know, and, and we're talking, a driveway is probably less than 15 feet away from the uh, the walls of those condos. It's that close. And it's, granted, cars will not impact uh, them as much as the buses have because Needless to say, the buses with their weight and everything else do do create more vibration. But there is that noise element and everything else for what could be, what, hour and a half, two hours. Um, that's one issue. The other thing is, is uh, we are talking about uh, probably improving the right turn curve that's there now because they put it in and you can make a left somewhat not very difficult to make. And uh, some people in the past have made lefts out of there. But if you make it a right to go to Royal to keep them out of the subdivision, the problem is once they get to Royal, then they're making a left and cutting through the subdivision the other way. Because a lot of them come, come out of the west and Lakewood Park all the way to Wonder Lake. And so what they do is, is they use the beach, the Bonner, to um, Oakwood, to Chesterfield, to Royal uh, cut that most everybody been around for a while, no, 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 knows that shortcut, or what they feel is a shortcut. Actually, if you look at the mileage that they put on and the, the, the amount of time that it takes to, for stop and go, it's a lot easier taking 120 all the way to Crystal Lake. But what my, my reservations are, if we're talking bringing in a lot more people as far as uh, the drop-offs, uh, how much more traffic are we going to throw into that, into Whispering Oaks down Royal and Chesterfield and but, you know, I, I don't know, do we need to look at this in a public works as far as how the traffic can work uh, to least impact the subdivision that's there? Uh, you know, I'm looking for solutions, you know, if somebody's got some, some ideas, but, uh, you know, do we put a, and of course I would ask that we would ask the residents in that area, do we put a no right turn uh, at certain school hours uh, onto off of 
both go down to Royal, so that you can't make a, a, a left, no left turns over there uh, from certain hours. And it looks like the chief might have something to say. Chief? Yes? I, I would say that we've spent some significant time examining this um, mm -hmm. on the staff level, and we've actually watched the traffic flow patterns at the end of last school year. Um, and although we do have some, we would have the opportunity to see if this would work. Um, if in fact there was an issue with traffic turning left on the, on the Royal off of Oakwood, we would come back to council with an amendment to have a left-hand turn restriction during certain hours of the day, just as we do with other specific areas in town, uh, specifically Allen and John is an example that we did at East Campus to avert some of the traffic flow patterns in that school when it gets out as well. So if in fact it was an issue, we could, we could very easily come back to council and examine that and address that issue. Plus it's a matter of enforcement, which we're confident that we can do. Well, like I say, the alderman for that area does have the reservation of that. And uh, I think to some extent we should be proactive as, as far as looking at that rather than waiting until we have the problem and then try to react, you know, at that time. Uh, it's just like the traffic light uh, that was, was brought up. And to me, I feel that uh, the traffic light should be, you know, all the infrastructure should be in before <coughs> the expansion's done, before they, they start moving the kids over and everything else so that we're not playing catch up. In other words, uh, I think of uh, Schaumburg uh, and we Woodfield uh, Mall area. And the roads were built before the expansions of everything so that the, the area was ready for, for the we, we, The truth is we, we don't know how many are going to turn left there until we actually study it, but we can bring an ordinance to you guys in less than two weeks in a council meeting and put that restriction on. And I think that's pretty responsive depending on the traffic flow patterns. We don't know what, what, the, what the, the school's going to do with the use of that exit. What we do know is that if that exit becomes an issue, they're more than willing to let us restrict them again and work with us down the road as well. At any given time, we can reopen this agreement and readdress that same issue. We specifically put a clause in there just for that reason alone. Because I know, again, with the agreement that we had before, uh, I had to, on several occasions, the first couple of years, keep calling them on the fact that, number one, the gate wasn't closed at night, which is supposed to be closed. Uh, We've already been in touch with the school, uh, the bus transportation too, to explain to them that we don't want them cutting through the subdivision to get back to 120 as well. And they're willing to make sure that's addressed with all their staff, yeah. that they turn right on the Royal, go back to Crystal Lake Road, go down to 120, and they're gonna go west uh, to the west side of town and not use the subdivision to cut through as well. Now, we'll talk about, uh, okay, the, we want the buses to, to go down to the, to the light at uh, Crystal Lake Road, correct? Correct. Um, Unless the they're actually up is kids in that subdivision. Years ago when we were doing uh, repaving Royal is when we put the islands in. And it was engineered very quickly. And if you look at the, uh, the curves, they're very, very tight curves. And the problem winds up is, is uh, I don't know if we need a softer corner. Uh, it would be the uh, southwest corner uh, where all the terraces or something to make it a little easier, because those buses have a real hard time uh, making that, that right turn. In fact, uh, they probably jumped <coughs> into, uh, that little island area more so than they don't to make that turn, because those things are long buses, and uh, it is a, a tight turn. And I, I just ask that maybe we, uh, Public Works looks at that. And again, it's not like uh, they're going to be doing this overnight, so we've got plenty of time to look at it, too. But let's make it easy for everybody. Let's make it easy for the bus drivers. Uh, that way we don't, we're not impacting the island so much that uh, they keep rolling over it. Uh, it hurts the buses as well as it hurts our curbing. Um, again, it's not something that has to be done overnight either, just so that we're prepared for it more, more so than anything else. Um, other than that, that's all I've got right now. Um, Chamber? Um, when we're on the bus thing, can, just to clarify, are the, the the only vehicles that are going to be going out to Oakwood are going to be from that north lot. They won't be coming from the south lot around the, <coughs> the rear of the building, will they? I don't. They, it's up to them how they want to. We're working with them to route their traffic on their property, but the buses ultimately will come in and probably route around the back of the building, come all the way up, and then come back out 
But I'm, I'm just saying for the, in response to all the vehicles, I don't think, I, I, I'd like clarification then, or you guys should probably get clarification if they're gonna allow that additional uh, vehicles from the south side to right, take, right now, to go along the, the only back, goal they have right, they do that right now, the only goal they have is to route, drop off and pick up traffic, which is going to start coming into the north lot to come right. out that, that path. The actual students which go into the south lot are going to stay in the south lot and exit out onto Crystal Lake Road, just as they do now with the assistance of okay. this traffic director. I was just addressing yeah. the increase in vehicles because <coughs> that parking lot to the north is a set number of spaces too. Uh, I know it changed a little bit, but I don't think it's... Yeah, it's, it's always, I, I believe it's always so. gonna remain employee parking. It's never gonna become the student, the mask, the, the parking expansion on the south side is all gonna be student parking. Students. And there, there is no plans to route student parking out onto Oakwood. Okay. That's all I had, thanks. Alderman Miller, did you have something to say? Uh, my only comment was I was really happy with the agreement. I think it really spoke to the conversation that we had and the assurances that we received. Um, and, and again, just a reminder in my head, this is a project that's gonna be under construction for two years. So traffic flow can change completely when they start moving dirt around. Um, so I think we need to get it into play and do the predictability and just do the studies. I don't know that we <coughs> know how much traffic is going to change while they're under construction. It's gonna be completely different in two years. So. I, my only comment was I'm really pleased with the agreement. It really does reflect the conversation, and I look forward to working with them. Thanks. Any other comments? I'll move on. Chief? The way I, I've been watching of what's going on, they're talking about bringing um, all the drop-offs at one spot, and then all the drop-offs would be leaving through driveway drop offs and pickups is what they want to potentially use it for in the future absolutely right so and again it's only so, a it, hour that in so it's it, we're talking one way honestly you know because we're the police are out there monitoring that today mm -hmm. and even with the congestion because we do get very congested with the drop off and the pickups on the south side of the lots it backs up onto crystal lake road so we're one of the goals we're trying to do is to alleviate that we get complaints from the rest of our community about our traffic issues on Crystal Lake Road. People that are actually living in other parts of town trying to get down Crystal Lake Road. So um, the turn lane to get into the south side of the west lots too light, and then there's not enough room to stack cars. So by them changing these traffic patterns, we allow ourselves to get more of the drop-off pickup traffic into their property off the roadway, which alleviates some of our concerns. And then by bringing them back out through the controlled light, it also alleviates some of our concerns as well. Um, and that whole next. Right, but all right, you've done a study, so are you been watching? Do you have some kind of idea how many how many vehicles we're talking, let's say, uh, within that hour to be dropping kids off? You know what, the, the school did a study, and I don't have it with me, but it actually documented the amount of cars. Um, early on, they did a study and provided it to council, I believe. I don't, I, I don't have a copy of it myself, but I did look at it at some point. Was it? Could you just email me that? I, I don't have it. I, was, I, I got a chance to view it from somebody, but I believe it was done. Uh, by the school district and supply okay. to the yeah, council I think last year. Was it was in there? Okay. Like I said, I, I'm just kind of curious of what we're going to be looking at in the near future as yeah. part And that, that was the important thing. We, we, we modified language in this agreement to allow us to request these studies basically as needed because we knew that they may, they may make question. some tweaks and changes as, the, as A, the renovations occur, and B, as they start to move more students from East Campus to West Campus over the course of the next couple of years. So anytime we saw an influx in volume, Troy has the ability to request a, in another study to see how that's impacting traffic on, on Oakland Royal, um, which was important to us, and, and the school is very accommodating with that. And they'll pay for it. Well, and then not just Oakland Royal, but any number of locations that are affected along And just for the record, we did meet with, uh, you know, our director, um, Moorfield, uh, Derek, I mean, director, sorry, <laughs> director Martin, 
Uh, City Minister Moorfield and I went to IDOT and we talked to him in Schaumburg about, about a whole bunch of different projects. This was one of them. Also, Senator Wilcox was with us. Um, with the light, Mr. Joosten, uh, regarding the light being green during some, certain hours, they would not do that. Um, that. They made that very clear. Uh, they do not do that and they will not do it at that location. Um, and it does not meet the warrants of the motor vehicle. What, what, is it? Uniform transportation. what is it? Manual and uniform traffic. Prices. does not meet that so just so you d do know we did go meet with IDOT we did bring this up uh, Senator Wilcox is with us and uh, they would not make the light green or because we that was a specific question that we did ask so just for the record uh, Alderman Schaefer um, just also too there's there's no restrictions on coming out of the the students coming out of the south lot heading north and turning left on Front Royal at the light so I mean, they do that today. So I mean, from the standpoint of monitoring the, the students or the parents or any vehicles going through that subdivision, that that happens today regardless if you come out on Oakwood. That's my thing. Any other questions, comments? David, yeah. Yeah, yeah so, um, so Derek was nice enough to find uh, the exhibit. So the, if you look at the exhibit he passed out, first page, this is exhibit A that's referred to in the agreement and exhibit A reflects the phrase drainage area and everything marked drainage area, which is basically lots one through 39 by definition and the easement that's located on those lots is what we're talking about. So now, Alderman Glab, if you, if you refer me to what you're talking about. I'm not talking about anything other than the 10 foot and 5 foot easements respectively on those lots. Okay, we're talking 1 through 39, but it's all a fencing. And if you look at uh, it goes behind the home tunnel, but that lots 1 through 3. Okay. Those probably serve as both. Yeah. And it diverts south or east. South or east. So if there's drainage issues up in that northwest quadrant, that's going to be a little different. Okay. And this is not the one that's going to be attached. We have one in three. Mm -hmm. I mean, we did it. HR Green did it. So we have a That was the whole point of going. And I understand, I see lots one through 39, but it doesn't show the drainage ditch here. Well, it's it's there and it's that recorded and it's it's described by yeah. 10 feet and 5 feet on both sides. It's, it's, yeah, it's there. Whole, uh, I'm good with it. What I'm trying to tell you, Dave, excuse me, but. Second to last page called Boone Valley Flat Number Seven. He's up on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. And that's all I'm saying. It's right, I get, I get it. So we took. He's drainage. saying. There's an additional drainage ditch. There's an actual drainage ditch. This is a theoretical one on paper, of course. Right, it's ten feet and five feet wide. He's saying that there's a uh, lot one. On that page, Burn Valley Plat, see lot number right. one there on the north? Right. Right. On the upside of this plat, that's Andy's lot. On the southwest corner of that, which is adjacent to lots three and five, he says that the, 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 the water is just triangles right across his lot number one. And what I'm saying is the drainage law empowers the same thing. If okay. the drainage doesn't quite run within this 10 foot and five foot, the, it, it goes where it goes and it's got to be left open. You can't block it and you can't stop them from stopping it from being blocked. Now in this particular case, you might be able to cause a diverting of that into this easement if you wanted to. We don't want to. We don't want to. No, I'm just saying, yeah. you know, it works within the easement to the extent it's there. Right. 
And if it wasn't there, it works by law. All, so, all I'm trying to get at is, is the fact that we have the agreement that work works. That, that's the, my, my main concern, and, works over than anything else. Uh, and you're saying the school's going to be on your property because that's where the drainage ditch is. And well, so if, they, if they need it to be. I mean, I maintain my line, so that's not an issue. Um, and so by the time they get down there, you know, they're done. Yeah. They won't have a problem with that. And then there's no indemnification for these landowners. The indemnification runs from D-156 to the city because of the nature of the agreement. Well, again, like I say, I just don't want it to be in this because it isn't part of 1339. That, that's the only, the only thing. I <coughs> what if I'm not there in 10 years? That Somebody else lives there, and the school says, "Well, there's, that's not part of the agreement." And they don't bother cutting it. Then you know, because maybe, maybe the next person wouldn't cut it. You can't live. Just say, "Oh, well, this person lives here, so you know they're going to do it." You know, you've got to look at down the future. So we're doing this uh, for now and in the future. All right. So, so the that, what that suggests is that your lot number one should be added because of the actual drainage that it crosses. I don't know why it's crossing your lot instead of within the easement that's provided. You would think you would run along the, the low end of that easement. But Unfortunately, when Whispering Oaks was designed, we did not have the expertise at City Hall. No, no city had the, that type of expertise at the age we were. And it wasn't until years and years later that we actually picked up uh, we actually had a separate uh, department heads for each each individual department. So, so, so if if you're interested, City Council, you can you know I have to go back to the drawing board here. You can make a motion to approve this and add lot number one and whatever subdivision Alderman Glass and legally to this description and the exhibit and description basically is block thirty one and block one. Block thirty one, lot one and block thirty one. It's the only, yeah. only lot there. It was uh, Boone Valley Plat Four. Okay, and then, then I would have to take that back to the school who's acting on this tonight. And, no. and again, no. No. all I'm looking at is, is will it be so that, that it's all the same? You know. I understand. No, I understand now what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think they'll have a problem with it, but I don't, I don't know. It's okay. Guys. So they should. Yeah, Alderman Chapman. Um, Attorney McCardo, so what you're saying that the this line showing the easement that we're looking at on page one, yeah, is that based on your drainage law definition? Did that may not be where the drainage actually is? I I don't know if it is or it isn't. Right. That's just where we've all agreed drainage needs to be maintained, and we happen to have a ten foot and five foot easement there to do so. So, so, if we, so if the water runs outside of that, which is what he's saying, and on some of these areas it's wider than 10 feet, I'm told, okay. they're going to deal with that. They're going to go on that property and maintain it. They would go on his property if we didn't legally describe it, but you know, he's making such a clear case this lot should have been included if that's where the drainage is. I'm assuming it is based on what he's saying. And I'm, I'm assuming if that's the case there, then is it anywhere else? I mean, we're, we're taking all this time for that one lot we are. that we know that one person on the council knows about. But there is another lot there? there. There is a lot on Silvery that uh, basically uh, uh, straddles the the property line is actually about 20 feet from where the drainage ditch is. And it's never maintained. And I don't, I haven't talked to that property owner in many years. Uh, it's a rental property now, but knowing the, the people and knowing their reputation in the community, they wouldn't have a problem with it at all. So, but I can't speak for them. Yeah. So, Alderman Glab, let me ask you this: the, the the easement that's actually to the south east of where you're saying your drainage occurs on your property, the actual easement area is that dry? Is it what? Dry. Uh, at the at the corner. At the yes. Corner. Yes. Basically, that last the angle uh, that runs southwest. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, there is a drainage easement, power and drainage easement there that's, uh, I think it's a 10 foot, uh, it's either 5 or 10, and what it does is the line goes over a open manhole, 
for the open drain from the from the the street. If you see where there's that walk walk path, mm -hmm. there is a drain that comes from uh, from the street over there and comes out to the drain. This, this is all beyond me. I, I don't do this. And um, you know the fa the fact that we would be requesting the school to actually maintain an easement over an area that doesn't have an easement. I mean, ma maintain the drainage area over uh, a lot that doesn't have a drainage easement may give them some pause. And, and again, just, you know, like I'll you said, with, with drainage law, there's no way I can block that. No way. I've never intended to block it. It wouldn't make any sense to do I, anything I know but that, what but, it is. But the school district's anticipation, I'm rethinking this, the school district's anticipation is, look, we're willing to go in and take care of the, the drainage minutes. ditch that has an easement. We're, we're not going to start walking on somebody's property because it's, it's, it's a problem area because we don't have an easement or alleged right to even be there. And whether they're going to rely on what I said was the drainage law, I don't know that. But we would be imposing a burden on them to take care of lot number one in whatever subdivision that is. I don't know if they'll do that now that I'm thinking about okay. it. Well, I'm not sure I, I don't that. want, uh, and I have no intention of uh, blocking this agreement in any way, shape, or form. I just want to make sure that it's solid of what we what we approve, and that when they approve it, it it's a solid agreement. And it if, is if it written. doesn't address that, it doesn't address it. You're right. Then that's fine too. Oh, I see. See, that's that, that's the point. Well, then it does go it go going right across this property. I know that, and I see that the drainage easement is wrong. We can see it on an aerial photo. Can you like to see this? On, a, <laughs> on an aerial photo, you can see. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah there you go. So, let me know if I can find it as best I can when we get these. So, if you look at this house right here, on the far south end of this picture here, mm -hmm. okay? And, and you go to the, the north side of this, this is the triangle, this is Andy's house right here. Everybody got it? Mm -hmm. okay. And go to the southwest corner of what is north is up, south, go, so go do southwest to the point. You see the creek coming across there? Yeah. It's a straight line. Mm -hmm. That's not how the drainage ditch runs. It runs along that, what looks like a street to the, it angles. It angles. The angle's wrong. So. They're, they're cleaning. I don't know what they're going to do at that point. My, my guess is they're going to run along the ditch. They don't care where it is, which is what I would do to make sure it's clean and run. Right. That's fine. So um, I, we can ask them. Why don't we leave it as is, but we will ask them to include lot one. But that doesn't mean you're giving your permission either. I don't have a problem. I know. I'd give my permission. I'd give my permission. Oh. permission. I don't really care. All I want to make sure is, is whatever agreement we have, that there's no holes in it mm -hmm. and that everything yeah. is, is proper and everybody understands it. That's, right. that's my intent more than anything else. Right. I still expect to go out there and maintain mm -hmm. that portion well, you can tell it is. to my uh, my likings, let's say, uh, right. versus the rest. Okay. Well, that's a good picture. So does does I mean drainage law to me would and I don't know what it would but it would imply to me that it's going to follow they're going to work where the water is flowing. It does. That's how it works. But yeah. that that's hard to rely on when you're walking across someone's property without an easement. Right when he's holding a gun, you're you're questioning the law. <laughs> I, I mean that's how that's why drainage law exists because of these types of ditches. That's that's in in, in this particular case, Andy. That's outside of your fenced area, correct? Correct. Yeah, it looks like. Yeah, it's not like they got to go my back fenced yard. Mm -hmm. No. In fact, I had when I first moved in, I, I had uh, phone arguments on the phone with uh, community development at the time because of the fact we had just gotten in a new uh, department head and said that all fences had to be on the property line, and they had to come out to, to see exactly what I was talking about. He was new; he didn't uh, understand the drainage ditch and everything else. And when he got done, he said, uh, put it wherever you want. Because <laughs> he understood that uh, we couldn't put it over that drainage way. 
I didn't want to. Right? The idea was to keep the dog in the <coughs> So, so, so could drainage. any verbiage go to just yep. saying it that follows the drainage in the water flow? That's where you're Well, I wouldn't change the document. I would leave the document the way it is with authority that we can change it to add this corner of lot one if the school district agrees. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Any other discussion by council on this one? Right. Is there anyone in the public that would like to make a public comment? No. Uh, at this time, we're looking for a motion for 6A as presented, including lot I, one. No, that's different. This is 6A is the traffic. 6A is the traffic. Yeah. The, is the oh, okay. yeah. Two I, so I'm looking for a motion for 6A as presented. Right. All in favor? I'll make that motion as presented. Second. Alderman Santi? I will second it. Discussion? Clerk, please call the roll. Um, Alderman Schaefer? Yes. Alderman Santee? Yes. Alderman Glab? Yes. Alderwoman Bainey? Yes. Alderman Mahevic? Yes. Alderman Devine? Yes. Alderwoman Miller? Yes. Thank you, Council. Next item on the agenda is 6B. Uh, looking for a motion uh, for 6B as presented, including lot one if approved by school, school district. Motion? All going, Benny? I'll make that motion. Okay. Thank you. Second? All going, Shake? I'll second. Uh, discussion? All going, Glenn? Yeah. I, I just want to bring up the fact that I still have concerns that uh, dredging that part of Oak Creek without looking at uh, further upstream. We're in, we're in 6B. For more than three to four we're years. in 6B with the school district. School district. Oh, 6B. Oh, I'm sorry. Can it's okay. I was waiting for you to make a motion, that so that's probably why you didn't make a motion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, perfect. So okay, not no no more discussion. All the one million. So I just just in my head. So we're asking with the modification for the school district to maintain a drainage easement that doesn't exist. Right, under drainage law, they have no understanding. We're asking them to drain where the act drainage actually goes on that particular lot, no other lot, just that lot where it actually flows. They, they, if the they, school they, approved. They have a right to do it, they don't have an obligation. And that's, that'll be clear in here with regard to lot one. Because there's no existing easement, but you know they have to read drainage law themselves again. Sure. Yeah, my reservations more than anything else is I maintain it to my standards. Uh, I have no problems continuing it, and I probably will always have it better looking than what they do, only because I, as a homeowner, you, you look at it all the time. Uh, my wife gets on me every time she moves back there, and, and I can't get close to the drainage system, so then I gotta get out there. But um, the point I'm making is, is let's say I, I sell my house in 10 years, then you got somebody else there now. You're not dealing with me. So we, we can't look at who, whose property it is or, or what they're doing right now. We've got to look at for the future exactly how this would work. That, that was my reservation more than anything else because then this isn't in the agreement and somebody's living there and they decide not to do the drainage ditch. Uh, it would be a problem down the road for somebody but this way it's spelled out. That's all. So in that, in that vein, I would go the opposite direction and say if we're looking for an entity to perpetually care for and maintain something, <coughs> clearly we would need to create an easement to do that because otherwise it's a vague, you take care of it as long as it's to be taken care of. So I, I would be more in favor of approving what was originally suggested and going back to them and creating an additional easement that way it's an easement in public record forever. So whether you're there 10 years, 20 years, 50 years, hope you are, but if you're not, 
then it's a public record, not just a misunderstanding between two entities. Okay. So it's vaguely saying maintain the water wherever it goes <coughs> under drainage law, to me is like, well, what if the water takes a right hand turn? Yeah, that may happen naturally because when we right. go back to the school district, we're gonna say, okay, we approved it as written. We'll bring, it, we'll bring out this clarification. Do you want to maintain this? Do you want to add this to the agreement? And the reaction is going to be yes, we'll do that under drainage law, or no, we'd like an easement, and then we'll do it. I mean, we'll have to have that discussion. And if the answer is no, 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 then this is the agreement. That's kind of how I see it going tomorrow. It'll be up to the school district to make that call because they're the one taking on the responsibility. Any other? Chairman McCarl. I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. What would be your best suggestion of to, to take to the school district? Oh, it's all, I'm sorry to put you on the spot. But you well, know. it's always an easement, of course. She's right, but they have to accept that easement. That has to be negotiated between you and them. I'm sure it can be, but you know we're working here without an easement. Yeah. If you want to give them an easement, we can make that offer and say he's willing to give an easement. Which there are other properties that could be a question as well. So I know there are. Well, we can't. I'm sure this is why we we're relying on drainage law and not going to each homeowner because you know what? Each homeowner is going to have an issue. I guarantee it. I've done this. That's why drainage law exists because it overrides all of their interests and takes care of the bigger good. And that means the people downstream and upstream. Mainly upstream. Can I make a suggestion? It is my ward. Uh, how about if we do this agreement and I just go door to door to talk to people and let them know what's going on as far as this agreement and also talk to those that possibly have their drainage waste upside the easement, uh, whether they would grant it a drainage easement. Because I'm, I, the one I'm, I'm specifically thinking about is that so far out of the drainage easement that they would just jump on it in a heartbeat. It's like I said, a rental and they wouldn't have to worry about maintaining it. But then again, is there a cost to the homeowner as far as creating that drainage easement? I don't know. I know there's a cost to the city if we go further and we start modifying this. <coughs> I mean, the best way to depict this is on a picture, and that means getting the surveyor involved because he's very good with it, but it takes time. And just see, the FYI, picture's worth everything because the picture shows exactly what we've been trying to wrestle with. But just FYI, so you know that, you know, you talked about how drainage moves and everything else, but the specific areas that I'm talking about have the actual concrete where the developer back in however many years ago, 40 years or whatever, uh, actually laid the, the concrete no, but down you know, at with the bottom the, of the drainage station. Another thing to consider is we're not making pianos here. This is, this is off an agreement that has existed for a long time mm -hmm. under a really rough agreement Drainage is obviously flowing to some extent. Nobody's crabbing about it. I, I'm not sure you want to make it perfect. I don't know how you can't make it perfect. Okay. It's a drainage ditch. It's not. In, it's not. Doesn't have concrete basins. Can't be defined. I'm not sure it's worth the effort. But I, I'll be. You know, it's up to you guys. It's. But it's more of a legal issue. That's why I asked you as it's far better, as your opinion. It's better. More details, better. No question about it. Okay. More legal rights conveyed are better. Thank you. There's a motion and a second on the floor. Is there any other comments, questions? Can you repeat the motion? Yeah. Uh, the motion would be as presented, uh, 6B as presented, including lot one, uh, as long as it's approved by the school district. That was the motion and the second. In other words, we'll sim simply either drop lot one in here and add it, if the school district agrees, even though it doesn't have an easement, I'll say that in here. Or we might negotiate an agreement and then we'll add the easement agreement to it. Uh, you know, we'll have to see where the discussion goes. I'll move up. My suggestion we keep it off and we uh, go with what was original. And uh, let's get the school to, to approve that. And then if, if there's uh, issues uh, or whatever down the road, then uh, we can address them. So we'll keep lot one off of there. Uh, and we'll just leave it one through 39 like we had. We like just discussed it for a half an hour. Oh, wow. <laughs> I understand that. Yeah.
what I did is just, uh, I wanted it to work what everybody sort of feel comfortable with. I think everybody seems to feel more comfortable without Lot 1 in there. And again, my whole philosophy for anything else was just to make it as firm as possible. But if everybody feels comfortable without Lot 1, I have no problem with it one way or the other. Um, and Sandy? Well, we, we, we have a motion on the table, correct? That's a second. Yeah, does anybody want to withdraw their second and yeah. withdraw the first? I mean, no, I don't. And I think most of us agree to this. And I think with uh, Attorney McCardle mentioning that you know he's going to bring it to him, and there's going to be a couple of elements that he's going to bring up to them, and we may come back with the trainees at that time, see how they you know respond to it. But I, I, I firmly believe that they're going to come back and give us an answer one way or the other. Do you want to stick with the motion? Yeah, yeah, I don't know who made, who made who? Did I second it? You made the motion, right? You too? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. No, it's, no, it's Bobby and you, Jeff, right? Correct. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone from the public that would like to make public comment regarding this item? All right. Clerk, hold on to that. Yeah. So this is, this motion is with lot one in there, right? So therefore, I'm going to recuse myself from voting on this only because lot one is mine. Okay. I just feel more comfortable whether it's legal or not. Billy called your name. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just going to refuse myself. All right, clerk, please call the roll. Okay, Alderwoman Bainey? Yes. Alderman Schaefer? Yes. Alderwoman Miller? No. Alderman Devine? Yes. Okay, Alderman Mahabek? Yes. Alderman Sankey? Yes. Alderman Glad? Abstain. Thank you very much. Next item on the agenda is a discussion to approve an ordinance amending the fiscal year 1920 budget general fund in the amount of $92,500 and the acceptance of a quote from uh, Brewski's Marine Construction for dredging west of Green Street Bridge in the amount of $92,500. And uh, Director Hobson, if you please present this item. Absolutely. This is, uh, so we just waded through in a, a really smooth project, I guess much smoother than anybody anticipated, including the Fox Waterway Agency with the dredging of the first part of the creek. Um, it was just a, a perfect example of how an intergovernmental agreement can and should work, I guess, uh, to be at least three months ahead and, and half of the budget. W knowing those facts and knowing where we were at, we brought that before city council just for a discussion of what do you want us to do now? And, and at that point, we did talk about, let's list some quotes and at least see where we're at with the dredging from Green Street to Route 120, which is outside of the purview of the Fox Waterway Agency. Um, I think we all know that it's, it's an issue will have to be addressed at some point. Um, and with the, the most current numbers, once we finish the project of our, um, where our trucking costs and our disposal costs were at, uh, being a total of 108,000, that's half of what we had approved at council back, I think in December with the trucking uh, associated with the dredging. Uh, so with that, I did, so I had talked to seven different agencies, uh, a lot of those that were recommended and, and have consistently worked with the Fox Waterway Agency. Um, I did receive three back. One of those was a hydraulic dredge, so it did give us, a, 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 I guess, that option of a mechanical dredge when they're actually using the backhoe and, and digging it out like we did for this first phase, versus the hydraulic dredge, which is when they would pump it out into the large geotubes when it would dewater on site, and then we would truck it out from there. So there is a, there is a little bit of variety, but you can see the costs are fairly close. What we ran into was the uh, mobilization costs and you know where some of those firms were located, what it cost them to set up to, uh, uh, complete the work, and that's where you saw some of the biggest difference. Uh, in any case, uh, Brewski's did come in at $92,500, and I wanted to present that just as an option um, and, and discussion from the council and see where it goes from there. Thank you, Bob. Discussion by council? Alderman Santi? Yeah, um, I, I think this is a, well, uh, another portion of the project of this area, dredging, which will become, make it more attractive for uh, the water and for recreational vehicles going uh, into that area. I, I have no real basis behind knowing, other than just being here and being on the water, that this dredging will probably last a good 20 years in regards to having boats navigate up and down that area. I. I have been told, I, I have no confirmation, but I've been told that 
there may have been catch basins built there many years ago upstream and I'm not sure if uh, if there is but uh, I, it's my understanding that if you do have catch basins you will be able to clean out and keep those creeks deep and uh, be able to navigate a boat up and down there for more than 20 years I just want to move forward to be able to have this there uh, and if at any point in the future there is that capability of doing something like that upstream I really would like to see that come forth at some time in the future I don't know if that's available to us at some point in the future uh, and just really I other than talking to a couple of constituents that's all I know and there's and there's no confirmation there that's all I have thanks thank you any other comments questions I'm glad yeah, I get my reservations more than anything else is, is directly north of this uh, on the other side of the bridge uh, you've got areas large area there at Boom Lagoon that uh, is not getting dredged and I tend to wonder just how much of that uh, silt will move and, and fill in in the areas that we dredge. Um, you know, we've, we've talked about this, uh, I don't know, seven, eight years, about the dredging of the Boom Creek, and we've never really, and I've asked on several occasions to look at this comprehensively, and that means all the way down uh, to where the silt catcher is uh, back on Oakwood uh, at the bend. And um, I'm not saying that we did that right away, but we should have by now at least had a study on the whole thing. And I kind of, I guess in the back of my mind, I think of uh, back in the mid 70s, the city took and they bought a dredger and they dredged McCullough Lake, just a channel from the Polish camp to the, Lakeland, the old Lakeland Park uh, beach. And, um, worked on that all summer long and it was only about four or five years and that whole thing just filled right in completely and uh, all that work was gone for nil and so I tend to wonder I mean what we're talking about here is silt again and uh, if we remove it in one area how how are we going to catch the stuff that's going to be coming coming down how is that not going to collapse of, you know sure there's not going to be just a gradual flow from uh, well eventually it will as as the rest of it collapses in and I just would hate to see that over a period of time that uh, is it going to be good for eight or ten years I don't think so I really don't I think if we have 100 year storm uh, that's going to move that type of uh, flows into that that creek all the way that's going to impact that whole area and if we're going to move forward with this, that doesn't mean I think that we should just give up and not think about the rest of it and see what we can do to alleviate my concerns for the future. And that's that's what I would do. Alderman Schaefer, I am I'm in favor of doing this. I I do um, feel that we. It's, it's like, where do you draw the line? I'd like to see this go at least to Maple Avenue, but um, it, it, to me, like I said, I'm not gonna vote against this, but I do know there's um, quite a few residents in that area that would probably like to see this go further. And once they see this, I'm sure <coughs> some more calls on that. That's all I had. That was one section just to mention, you know, that, that Specific, I don't, I don't have, I don't remember pulling the maps and seeing who owns the lake bottom or the river bottom at that point. But it is something that we had discussed uh, potentially with a few residents of developing an SSA or creating an SSA for them, um, where you know we can cause it to be excavated, but it affects, you know, directly affects them privately, rather than this is a more of a public entity on at least on one whole side of that. And so, from an SSA and dredging at that point, is something that that is is always an option. Whether if they got together as a group of homeowners, they could probably tackle this and, and have a really nice navigable channel back there. Any other questions? Comments? Anyone from the public like to make a public comment regarding this item?
Seeing none, I'm looking for a motion for 6C as presented. Alderman Santi? I will make that motion as presented. Second. Alderman Bainey? Discussion? Alderman Santi? Yeah, real quick, I mean, when, when you, it's, it is a unique section of town because it's bordered by Green Street and 120, and we have a huge parking lot right there. At some point in the future, I've got to believe it's it's a it's a selling item also that you have actual you know navigating of boats that you can put there, which does make that a little bit more of a selling point, at least in my book, in regards to that real estate. And I I hope that's you know that's just a just another you know just another good positive point there that who knows might come in and and, and take a look at that uh, that piece of property. That's all I have. I couldn't agree more. I mean, it, certainly, uh, with the peers that we have, or the rights of the peers that we have, and creating public slips, uh, creating an attractive parcel in, within our TIF district is an excellent opportunity. Alderman Schaefer? I agree. I hope uh, we also consider making uh, CIP and budget and, um, things for other areas of town because we've spent quite a bit on Green Street. Um, I was looking at the quote, and my, I'm in favor of it, but I just see uh, dredging operations will stay 10 feet away from seawalls to help minimize failure. Have the seawalls been, what are the conditions of the seawalls? I hate to have this start and then run into further expenses on this. Sure, the, the one seawall obviously that they're, they're looking at as well, um, I have three, three different firms looking at, is the, the seawall that's adjacent to um, the landmark school as some of the dead men have given way there. The seawall that's adjacent to the McHenry Savings Bank, that's in good shape. Um, just that one spot that's on the south shore is in our area that we're having examined as well right now. And what some options might be there, whether that's cutting down, whether that's for sheeting in front of it, what if there's some other options that we're looking at. Uh, separate, we do have money that's been in the budget um, to repair that seawall. So that's a, a, se a separate item that I'll get some quotes on. We're trying to answer some questions in regards to a, a, a sewer main that runs right in that area. The seawall sea is not an overly big, uh, tough project for us to tackle. Just a little bit concerned with a, a, a sewer main that's in that area that the public works is already on top of and we'll follow up on that. Any other questions? Clerk, please call the vote. Um, Alderman Santi? Yes. Alderman Bainey? Yes. Alderman Miller? Yes. Alderman Devine? Yes. Alderman Mahedek? Yes. Alderman Schaefer? Yes. Alderman Glenn? Yes. Thank you, Council. Uh, next item on the agenda is 6D, uh, discussion to approve an ordinance amending the fiscal year 1920 budget, parks developer donations fund in the amount of $26,200 for the purpose of purchasing light poles at, uh, for the Miller Point project. Director Hobson, Thank please you. present this item. Uh, this is one that uh, it's, you know, it's never good to bring forth a budget amendment and I hate doing that. In this instance, to see the private investments that's been done to that point and the transformative nature that that investment has created down the point is something that uh, it, it was certainly worth discussing with, with the Riverwalk Foundation for the city to uh, bring forth to the city council the $26,200 uh, in conjunction with the project to purchase the lighting. They bought everything else with the, uh, the project, the gazebo, they put on the electrical, it, through the course of the project, they, we worked closely with them. Um, one of the things that we had done, and this is where, if there was a breakdown, this is what I put my finger on, is that to maintain the lights uh, were the same as everything else on the project, we ordered, the city ordered those um, with the assumption that, I guess at some point, that we were just gonna hand that bill over to the Riverwalk Foundation. And it, it just got caught up in the mix because of the long lead time with the lights. They should be in within the next two weeks, and that's why I apologize that this is before you in this manner. Again, with the private investment that's happened there for us to invest $26,200 from our parks developer fund, you know, Riverwalk is very similar to a linear park, and while we haven't actually dedicated Miller Point as a park, it certainly would be justified to use that money for this type of project and actually complete the project rather than uh, the option of, all right, we'll be, you know, leaving those light standards vacant and then we come back next year with a CIP item and put those lights in. Um, 
I think for what the, the Rock Foundation has, has done and invested, not only for this project, but the, the phase before this was another 300,000. So over the last five or six years, they've invested over a million dollars in that downtown and created uh, more linear footage for our downtown. Um, I think the $26,200 from Parks Developer Donations was uh, not a big ask on the part. Any other questions, comments? I mean, uh, Santi? Yeah, with this investment from the foundation, six hundred and ten thousand uh, dollars. Bill, do you have any idea what they have left in their fund or in their? I do. After after everything said and done, um, you know, a couple, a couple of the extras that they had in associated with the project, they're going to have about thirty thousand dollars left as a total balance. Um, so, you know, they're in a position that they could picked up this, and this is one of the discussions that we had with them. Uh -huh. However, they basically went <coughs> down, down to zero. And now they've shifted gears more from a building to really a fundraising and to an awareness of the point and how, and you'll see it like the next supplement is a good example of um, drawing that awareness, drawing people down there, creating the momentum that we have, that we're at, but we've finally achieved, they're a big part of that. So, you know, the old adage of it takes money to make money, for them to have some money in the bank any money that they've had, they've invested in the city. So whether that $30,000 stays for them, it just keeps them viable is really what happens. Thank you. Alderman Glenn? Yeah, um, and I know in here in the supplement it says that we can take and use the uh, developer donations uh, as far as the parks. Uh, I don't know, is this area deemed park area at all? Well, we, we've treated the Riverwalk as a, you know, as that as lineal as park. that lineal park. You know, it's okay. all of our maintenance. And, you know, it's, I know it's a different fund, but our maintenance is done by the Parks Department. Um, so in that term, it, so we'll that's how that's how we're treated. considering the Riverwalk per se as part of our Parks Department, correct? Yes. Okay. That's fine. That's all I wanted to to get stated. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Any, anyone from the public like to make a public comment? Seeing none, I'm looking for a motion to approve 6D as presented. Alderman Schaefer? I'll make that motion as presented. Thank you. Second? Alderman Miller? I'll second. Thank you. Any discussion? Clerk, please call the roll. Uh, Alderman Schaefer? Yes. Alderman Miller? Yes. Alderman Devine? Yes. Alderman Mahevic? Yes. <coughs> Alderman Bainey? Yes. Alderman Glad? Yes. Alderman Santi? Yes. Thank you, Council. Yes. Next item on the agenda is 6E, discussion to approve a temporary use permit to allow tents with live music and a special event liquor license on Saturday, September 14, 2019, from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. for the McHenry Riverwalk Foundation Light the Night event. Director Hobson, once again. It's me again, huh? <laughs> it's all you. So, uh, just as capitalizing off of what we just talked about, um, and I, again, this one's come together really quickly, and so I know we're, you know, we're about a month just we're less than a month off from, from this proposed event and some of the, much of the planning has been done already. This really is the kickoff for that point, you know, that, that initial event of, all right, now we're gonna take advantage of the space that we created. Um, and so it's really more of a low key, the, the, the first, there's two, two singers that night, one's Fox Crossing String Band, which we've had at a city band concert at one point, and another one is just an, an acapella singer um, that will be up there with a, with a guitar. There'll be a, a number of, uh, I think, half a dozen crafters and artisans that will be there, as well as some local food presence. Um, the idea was really just to draw awareness to that, to that point. It becomes somewhat of a fundraising opportunity for the Riverwalk Foundation on that day to kind of reestablish their, uh, their goal, their traction, their direction. Um, it is on the same day as the Wine Walk, and so we, the Riverwalk Foundation will have a booth. As people come over the bridge, they'll have a, it'll be a water stop and then that transitions into later in the evening where we have this event that in the middle of the event, one of the things that the city has worked closely with the Riverwalk Foundation is the fire globes. If you've seen those, that would, this would be the initial time for us to, to light those up and uh, again, draw really to the Riverside Drive area, um, draw some more attention and more people down there to that area with this type of event. Highlights, you know, local businesses reinvested into the project and uh, just another thing that creates that momentum that we've been talking about and looking the chamber uh, this is not an event where we're doing the 
the food or the liquor, correct? This is no. This is the river. This will be the Riverwalk Foundation, okay. and they've talked about partnering. That we kind of talked about. They're going to partner if it's approved. They'll partner with Buddies, who has their uh, catering license for the alcohol already, so they could, you know, within our statutes, they can sell there. Uh, you know, this is a, a a 500 to 750 person event, so it's a smaller, uh, much more quaint yeah. event. We're not. The goal is not a Shamrocks the Fox type of event here at all. <coughs> That's all I had. Thanks. Any other questions, comments? Anyone in the public like to make a public comment? Seeing none, I'm looking for a motion to approve 6E as presented. Alderman Laney? Make that motion as presented. Thank you. Second? Alderman Schaefer? Second. Discussion? Clerk, please call the roll. Okay, Alderman Laney? Yes. Alderman Schaefer? Yes. Um, Alderman Miller? Yes. Alderman Devine? Yes. Alderman Mahavik? Yes. Alderman Sankey? Yes. And Alderman Black. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Next item on the agenda is 7A, uh, discussion regarding Orchard Beach Improvement Maintenance Intergov Intergovernmental Agreement. David, would you like to start this off? Yeah, I'd like to refer to Jim. <laughs> Jim, come on up. <laughs> I hate to have you sit there anymore. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> I'm glad to. Um, my name is Jim Condon. I'm the County Township Highway Commissioner. Um, and I'm here tonight you know again. Before you do this, Jim, are you uh, the only two new alder? Yes. Yes. Women. Um, do you know what's going on here in Orchard Beach? I, I was do. going to give a quick introduction to that. Too, yeah. I mean, do you, have, do you, you know anything about? You don't know anything about this. So, so yeah, you have. Yeah, to I was going to do that. Exactly. Including where it is and all that. Yeah. Uh, first off, to the new council members, congratulations, and thanks for giving me my wife, my wife back. Appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> of course, I was just mad at that, which probably happens too often. Uh, so, some history. Orchard Beach, originally Orchard Beach Drive, uh, was a, a non-dedicated road, a subdiv non-dedicated subdivision road. It extended from where Riverside Drive makes the bend up north, uh, just south of McCollum Lake Road. It was a non-dedicated road. It was privately maintained by an association all the way up to uh, Shellmire Estates, and from, Shell and from Shellmire Estates, it continued to be private. That was the case up till, and I'm not sure when the Kennedy development happened, but when the Kennedy development happened, um, things changed in that whole area. Uh, the property that the Kennedy development sits on, I don't remember the name of it. Uh, Riverside yes. Hollow. To the west of it. Riverside Hollow. Riverside what? Hollow. Riverside Hollow. When Ri Riverside Hollow was uh, developed, it was annexed into the city of McHenry. And as a result, they annex, and when you annex a property, if it's a road, if it's a road in the township, it then becomes the municipalities. For example, places like uh, um, Patriot Estates. When you annex Patriot Estates, you then have Lincoln Road, uh, Ringwood Road, where Martin's Woods was. When you annex Martin's Woods, you took in Ringwood Road adjacent to that. So those become township or city roads as opposed to township or non-dedicated roads. And, and I know your attorney